When we first met them, they only had one child, one was on the way. So the house was a project for them to live in, for them to grow in. They were also avid art collectors, so that had to be layered into their space. So when they found this, it had all the space requirements that they needed, but it needed a full overhaul. It was a series of incredibly small rooms, very dark, probably hadn't been renovated in 70 years. There was a lot of existing architectural features in the home that as opposed to ripping them out and doing something new that would have been easier, say, for the contractor. We fought really hard, both the client and us aligned that these were key elements that were gonna tie it to what it was before. I visited them at their existing house, so I got a sense of how they currently lived. And after that, it became clear that this really needed to be a place that had a lot of soul. And we could do that with texture, we could do it with some color. You see when you come in in the front entry, there's a high contrast patterned floor, so there's a lot of textural pieces. The existing staircase was a dark heavy wood, so we painted that out in a charcoal grey to pick up on the patterned floor tile that we chose. We wanted to be able to see straight through the house from the front door to the back and that everything should flow. So this floor would become the floor that is the most lived in floor. So it had to tick a whole bunch of boxes, but keep it as open as possible. The fireplace is not existing, that's a found piece, and we chose to add a very dramatic piece of millwork here. The husband is an avid record collector and will often want to play music while they're entertaining on this floor, so it had to provide a space to have the turntable as well as his extensive record collection. And the nice thing too, with the introduction of the black, the millwork was designed in a more traditional fashion to pick up on the architecture of the home, but then doing it in that contrasting black, it just contemporizes it a little bit more. We love to use found pieces rather than buying everything new. The pieces have a story, the pieces have a personality, and in a space, they just enhance it. For example, the mirror is from Paris. We got it on one of our buying trips. And the moment we hung it in the store and the homeowner came in for a design meeting, she immediately said, that's mine and that's gonna go over the fireplace. <laughs> so we knew that it was a very natural place for it. And it helped to inform some of the choices, like for example, the marble on the fireplace, it really just works perfectly. The dining area really just bridges the living area to the kitchen. The addition of an elliptical table helps to soften the edges. It isn't just so jarring from one space to the other, and it just makes the flow really, really easy. And then the bench in the back, there was obviously this really great bay window, which the family uses now, whether it's a dinner party or whether it's the kids or just a spot to hang, as an extension of the kitchen and the dining room, so it kind of connects the two. The kitchen was located on the other side of the house and of course we knew it was going to be open. We chose a big foot door to basically be the whole back end of the kitchen so they have this extension of the house going into the backyard. Being a young family we knew they needed a lot of storage so we wrapped full height wall cabinets all the way around. In the kitchen, it's their fridge and their pantry. In one of the cabinets, when you open, it's this fantastic shot of mustard yellow to bring a little bit of whimsical into the storage space. We chose not to do any uppers, again, to try and keep things a little bit lighter on that side. And then it just introduced some natural wood floating shelves to bring that wood piece back in. We introduced copper in the kitchen as well for the pendant lights and I love the fact that the client was open to not, you know, everything had to just be chrome or everything had to be gold or polished stainless. She really was open to using different materials to create some interest so, and it turned out great. Well, wow, the powder room was really fun. Yeah. And it started with an image that was a similar wallpaper, and we used it on every single wall. And we love the idea of not having a mirror. So above the sink is a framed portrait. It's definitely a conversation piece for that room. And then again on the floor, we did a really simple marble basket weave tile. And that's very traditional, and the wallpaper is anything but traditional and black and gold skulls. It's pretty fun. 
On the second floor, the layout was driven primarily from the fantastic stained glass at the front of the house. It's an amazingly beautiful window and we knew we wanted it in a very special room, so we created the master ensuite around that. We've positioned the beautiful soaker Victorian Albert tub underneath that stained glass to create a beautiful backdrop to the rest of that bathroom. The master bedroom, there's a beautiful porch on the outside of the house. They get to go sit out there and they are able to bring that outside in. There was an existing fireplace there that wasn't operational, so there was a lot of discussion about whether we close it up or should we restore it. The actual making it work again would have just been really difficult and invasive in the upper floor, but we kept it and made it a feature in the room in the clients loved that that is a portion of their space. The nursery wanting to create a space at that point, she was pregnant. We didn't know what the sex was going to be, so using just a really beautiful wallpaper on the wall and area carpet, it's a bit of a smaller room. So we tried to keep it very, very neutral by using just beiges and tones of beige. He was pretty adamant about having some sort of fun feature in his space, and I think he was, what, three at the time mm -hmm. when we were designing the space, so Spider-Man was the choice. There's a beautiful built-in, there's some whimsical, fun hardware on there, and then we just did a really big Spider-Man mural on the back that personalizes his space for him. The third floor probably had the biggest transformation. It was a low ceiling, and then partway through construction, we started talking about what if we open the ceiling up. It's a fantastic vaulted ceiling, great space where they can spend family time. Again, adding those moments of pops of color. So on the back side of the family room, encompassing the door to the bathroom, there's these built-in bookshelves that are done in a bright color that transitions into the washroom and behind. So, you know, when you go up into that space, it feels pretty amazing because the ceiling height is so tall, but it has also these pops of color. There's fantastic artwork. There's this beautiful, massive Turkish light fixture that hangs above the stairs. So it's a great place for them to hang out. I think incorporating different styles helps to make a home not a showroom. We work very hard for our spaces to never feel like you could buy everything from there at one particular store. If your taste is you like some mid-century pieces, you like some antiques, there's no reason why your home has to be one or the other. It does bring it to life. It feels more lived in. It doesn't feel unapproachable. You know, it comes back to infusing that element of soul into a space.